Hello, my name is Krill Carson. I'm a marine biologist and the president of the New England Coastal Wildlife Alliance. And I'd like to tell you a little bit of what we do and especially our work with ocean sunfish, one of my favorite animals. I'm gonna share my screen, get on my PowerPoint. Okay, so this is the ocean sunfish. This is a great um, drone footage. You can see exactly how big some of these fish are. This is during one of our rescues last fall. The New England Coastal Wildlife Alliance is an all volunteer nonprofit. We're in Middleborough, Mass. And we're here to basically do what we can to understand and protect the unique coastal marine wildlife of New England. And we do a three pronged approach. We combine research with conservation and educational outreach. We think it's easy to do all three and it's very important. We also do a lot of collaborations with other researchers in the area. Right now we're gearing up for our South Coast Terrapin project. We are studying the diamondback terrapin, a threatened species of marsh turtle in the coastal waters of New England. So it's really exciting getting our interns all geared up and trained and ready to go. While uh, whale watching, we see a lot of different animals offshore from the large uh, humpback whale on the top left to the northern gannet on the top right. On the bottom, we have right here the basking shark, the gray seal right in the middle, and bottom right, the Atlantic white-sided dolphin. We also see sightings of ocean sunfish and people get very excited when they see this big unusual looking fish. So I thought wouldn't it be interesting and there it is at the surface. Wouldn't it be interesting to start a community sighting network and basically engage and encourage the general public to help us record sightings along the shores of New England. What we didn't realize is that ocean sunfish would strand on an annual basis starting mid-August all the way through the end of December. And at first we thought maybe this was just a, you know, a fluke, an anomaly, but it is an annual occurrence. Every year we're dealing with this. And each year we're learning more and more about why this is happening. So you can go to our website. We have two websites. We have the main website, nequa.org, and we also have our New England Basking Shark and Ocean Sunfish Project website, nebshark.org. But at this particular website, you can learn more about the project, more about basking sharks, ocean sunfish, and you can also report your sightings to us, which we would greatly appreciate. So the ocean sunfish is the heaviest bony fish in the ocean, yet their bones are all cartilaginous. They're related to the triggerfish, boxfish, porcupine fish, puffers, filefish, and they're a very unusual looking animal. They are found, as you can see in the bottom part of this slide right here, in all oceans of the world. We're in this area right here, and we're really focused in the New England area, but you can see that with the red area, they really are coastal species. They spend most of their spring, summers, and falls in high latitude, uh, cold, productive waters, and then in the winter, they have to head south. They can't really deal with prolonged cold temperatures. They don't really have any predators. Not much will eat something this big, and they're not uh, th uh, classified in terms of their conservation status. Uh, the IUCN has listed them as threatened worldwide, but very little is known, so it's really hard to come up with any kind of status for the species. They're not eaten in the United States, though they are eaten in other countries. So this is a really big, unusual looking fish. They start out as this cute little fry with all these spines, little punk rocker, and then they grow very quickly into that beautiful fish. So here's an underwater video. This is a good friend of mine, John Chisholm. He works for Division of Marine Fisheries in Massachusetts. He was offshore. He just got a GoPro. He wanted to kind of play around with it. They're off of Monomoy and they were kind of sneaking up on this ocean sunfish. And you'll notice how this fish swims, very unusual, very different than most other species, using that very tall dorsal or top fin and the very large anal fin or bottom fin to swim. That's how they propel themselves through the water. The tail fin is called the clavis. It's really used more as a rudder. You can see they're very curious, the fish coming right over to the camera, getting a great look, and then it will be moving off. So it's a beautiful fish. Uh, and you can see it's just, you know, 
very curious, spending time looking at the boat. What uh, we're trying to figure out is why these animals are stranding each year. And we're learning that it could be for a number of reasons. Vessel strikes, uh, entanglement in fishing gears, getting pushed along the shoreline due to wind and current issues, becoming entrapped in shallow tidal areas, cold stunning in the fall and early winter. So here's some quick photographs. You can see that these animals do get hit by boats. That's the picture on the left, or get caught in gear, the picture on the right. You can see here, we have a, a number of people trying to rescue a fish that's getting pushed onto a beach. This is Ranger Megan. She was on Coast Guard Beach and she enlisted the services of a few other uh, passerbys and they were able to move this fish safely off the beach and save its life. We also have these fish getting caught in shallow tidal areas. And if you don't get them out before the tide goes out, then they're in big trouble. And we do work with fishermen. Fishermen are so wonderful. They're a key asset for us because they have the know-how and the ability to help us move these big fish out of really small coves and tidal areas where it can be very dangerous for the animals. Here's our, one of the local fishermen, Bruce, with myself and Mary Rayner trying to rescue this fish that was caught in Little Buttermilk Bay. We also do deep water rescues if we can. We'll try to move the fish, swim them out of a harbor. Uh, we are not very good at what we do, but we are trying as much as we can, trying to figure out how to save these animals. In the fall, if the animals don't get out of Cape Cod Bay, then just like the sea turtles, the picture below, ocean sunfish will get cold stunned. And this is a condition where they just can't tolerate prolonged cold temperatures. And they become like hypothermic and they wash ashore. And by that time, even if we push them back in, it's too late for the animal because they're not gonna survive. It's very, very sad. So we're coming up with lots of different kinds of ideas for rescue gear. Here's one type of adjustable tarp or sling. Here's a second sling, a little bit more uh, solid piece of fabric that you can use to uh, basically hold the fish close to the side of the boat and then slowly tow it into a safer area for release. It would be even better if we could create this kind of tow raft that you could tow behind the boat. You could move more quickly and get the fish to a safer area in a shorter period of time. If the animal strands live and the tide goes out and then the animal's left high and dry, then we're really in trouble because now you're dealing with dead weight. And in this case, we were not able to get this beautiful ocean sunfish back into the water. You can see behind the team, less than 20 feet uh, before she died. So we're trying to work on something like a cart where we could actually pull the fish onto the cart and then push the, the cart with the fish into the water. So when we respond to a stranding of a dead ocean sunfish or if the animal dies on us, then we switch gears, hoping that the data and the tissues that we collect from each carcass will help us better understand and protect the living animals. Here you can see the numbers that we've documented over time. You can see that from 2008 to 2012, the numbers of ocean sunfish increased, but then we had a huge drop in 2013 and another increase. And 24, uh, 2019 is off the charts. I haven't updated this slide, but we had 150, it would be way up, 150 sunfish strand this previous season. It was the worst season yet. Here's what is happening for a lot of these animals. They are migrating south in the winter. They're, they miss Race Point in that clear shot down to the Caribbean. And the arm of Cape Cod that juts 60 miles into the Atlantic Ocean captures them. Cape Cod Bay, the area right here, is 20 miles deep. Even if they try to work their way back out, uh, Great Island in Wellfleet and Long Point, those two hooks turn them back around. And so it's very hard even for the smart animals, the cetaceans, the whales to get out of Cape Cod Bay. For a level A exam, we record some of this basic information. We also have two portable tripods with crane scales and chain falls where we can weigh the animal on site. You're not moving a 500 pound fish, so you gotta do everything where the animal, the carcass lands. We take lots of measurements. We again have weighing scales that we use to weigh as many carcasses as we can. And then if we have time and if the carcass is fresh enough, then we'll go deeper into the carcass and collect a lot more information and many more tissues. We use these tissues for our research and to support researchers, not just in the US, 
but all over the world who are also very curious and interested in this animal. What's really interesting, what I didn't know about ocean sunfish is that they have a very thin layer of rough skin with a lot of mucus, but they have a thick layer of reticulated collagen underneath the skin. And as a whale biologist, it reminds me of whale blubber completely surrounding the animal, but it's hard as rock. So if you wanna get into this animal to sample or look at any of the tissues, you have to remove this top layer. And you can see that this layer changes in thickness over the course of the animal. We also collect the gonad to try to determine not only gender, but we're also seeing if we can learn more about the age of sexual uh, reproduction. And you can see that they have one testy or one ovary, and we access it through the anal vent on the bottom right here. You can see me cutting into the anal vent, the opening right there, in order to get to the gonad. The gonad sits right behind the area right here. I've created diagrams of all the organs inside of the ocean sunfish. I couldn't find anything online, so I created all my own materials. And one of the things we're having issues is we'd like to age this fish. And I thought, oh, ocean sunfish, heaviest bony fish. It'll have otoliths, calcified structures in the inner ears, and we can use those structures to uh, age the animals. What I didn't realize is that most of this fish is cartilaginous, and their otoliths are tiny, tiny, tiny. These structures are about the size of a dry lentil. And when you section them, you can see that there are no rings or growth bands that you could use for aging purposes. So now we're collecting vertebra and eyes, trying to figure out if there's other tissues that we can use for aging studies. And we're also partnering with the community. We can't do it all, and we wanna get other people involved and give them the experience that they might need to move them forward throughout their careers. And you can see that there's a lot of interest, a lot of people are very concerned, trying to help out to do what they can. And we really appreciate it because this is a community effort. We can't do it alone. So we allow people to get involved in any way that makes uh, sense for them, whatever is comfortable. They can just be an observer, let us know if the carcass is on the beach, collect a little information. If they wanna do more, they can be a level A responder and actually take measurements, body measurements, collect some tissues, tag the carcass. Or as a level B responder, they can do almost everything we do by collecting a lot of tissues from the carcass that they're examining. So thank you so much. Here's my contact information. Contact me anytime if you have any questions or concerns and check us out. NEQA is a wonderful volunteer nonprofit. We need your support. Thank you for listening to me today about the ocean sunfish and I hope to be in contact with anyone who's interested in this species in the future. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn this off.